Okay. Greetings everybody, Ben Maza here. I know it's been a while since I've done content lately and I do apologize for that. I even explained that on my Twitter feed, which I hope a lot of people can understand that, but things happen and it is what it is. But, um, so without further ado, as the title of the video says, I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite Star Wars novels that was made that was written by E.K. Johnston, which basically, it just explains how the character, the most well-loved Star Wars character from the Clone Wars and later on Star Wars Rebels, known as Ahsoka Tano, explains, you know, what happened to her during the events of, you know, after the events of Revenge of the Sith and in between, you know, before the events of Rebels, which this book... It does explain much about what she's been up to. Oops, uh, sorry class. Let me just take care of something real quick here. Sorry. My computer's being very slow about that. Sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just typing a few things real quick before I explain the summary. Um, That's all I'm saying on the matter. Oh. Uh, one second class. Hello. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Ah. Bah. Sorry, class. You had to hear mm. that. Ba. Ba. But anyways. This is Flavio wow. has decided to join and ma. The cinnamon roll ah. loves to tease me. Loves to tease me. Anyways, so yeah, basically what I was trying to explain to Rio here, I'm reviewing my favorite novel called the Ahsoka novel. Um, hang on. Oh, I'm so sorry, chats, for not seeing you guys. Hello, Brandon. Hello, Steven. Uh, Brandon said Ahsoka is always a legend, which she is. At okay, let's just explain something real quick here in the beginning of the first two seasons of the series a lot of star wars fans did not like her she was at first a snooty teenager that was always reckless and tries to um how do i say this delicately without sounding a little rude miss cinnamon roll hmm mm -hmm. She was being a, a spoiled brat. She was just being a brat. And uh, and lately, they decide, you know what? We're going to make it serious and all that. You know, but later on throughout the seasons, she became a chore. 
And I really recommend you guys re-watch the Clone Wars series so that you guys see her character arc. Especially the final season, oh, which... Oh. Hmm? Oh, my poor cinema roll. She has to listen to me being a nerd. <laughs> but nah, like, this novel, you know, the Ahsoka novel, basically explains the summary of Ahsoka's life after the events of the final season of the Cold Wars, all the way, you know, before the events of Star Wars Rebels, of where she made her appearance, which I can explain the summary of the book. So let's start with the summary. So the book explains... You know, she Ahsoka was on a planet known as... Oh god, I'm trying to remember this. This name is hard to pronounce, but... She was in this distant planet as a mechanic... You know, in a distant pa planet going by the name Ashla. As her Alice name, which... A lot of Star Wars fans who do not know this keyword of Ashla... And those who have not watched Star Wars Rebels... And yes, Spanish Giovanni, I'm back with Star Wars. Yes, you will embrace me being a nerd. Re. Like. Nerd. Oh. Nerd. You see what you did, Spanish Giovanni? <laughs> see what you did? See what you did? You just started the nerd campaign. Thank you. But anyways, back to the thing. <clears throat> True, Star Wars fans who know why... Like, I love how this uh, the author did that. Putting the word Ashla as Ahsoka's alias name because that is, as the Bindu explained in Rebels, is Ashla and Bogan. Ashla means light, Bogan means dark. So basically, Ahsoka chose the name Light as her alias name, which, of course, she does not have her, you know, her unique green lightsabers, which Originally in the novel, it was the green lightsabers, but of course, I think, let's just alter it a bit, because, you know, the Clone Wars did change the lightsabers from green to blue in the final season, so let's just picture them as blue. The book... I kind of like the idea that the lightsaber would be blue, because I think blue would kind of suit her a bit more. I mean, maybe one blue and one green, that would make her more unique, you know? But that's just me, you guys. So Oh, see, Spanish, see, Spanish Giovanni actually says something that is actually true. The Clone Wars turned Ahsoka from a kid to an intelligent woman, and that is 100% true. She actually did became more mature. She became intelligent. And sadly, throughout the war, like, her character did change. And during, oh god, I'm trying to remember which season, season 5 of The Wrong Jedi... When she was accused of a crime she didn't commit of blowing the, you know, the attack of the Jedi Temple. When the Council turned their back on her, you know, stripping her of her Jedi rank. Like, she felt betrayed. She literally felt betrayed I by mean, the very would. people that was her family. Over something she didn't do. I would. Hmm? I mean, think about it. You literally, you would feel betrayed. Imagine somebody turned around and said to you, Hey, uh, Ben, you, um... You broke my bait mod. So, uh, yeah, you're banned. Imagine how betrayed you would feel. Oh, I would be very that, pissed off. Mood. But not- That would be a mood. <clears throat> yeah. But the thing was, though, I love how they executed her decision of leaving the Order. Like, at first I thought she was gonna take the bead back from Anakin's hand and, you know, go back. But I love how she did no. I'm not coming back. But during the final season, we see her arc like... She was the first being a mechanic. Okay, I really recommend you watch season 7, guys. For you all to understand what I'm trying to get at here. But Ahsoka in season 7, she was originally just a normal citizen. And then when during the Pike Syndicate incident, which connected with Maul... Which, key mind, mind you, this is during the Siege of Mandalore. This is like before the Siege of Mandalore arc. Which, it shows her from trying so hard to become a normal citizen, but then she's like, no, I gotta have to let the council know about Maul. Like, Maul is a key, is a key part of capturing him and ending the war easily, which, that would explain that, you know? But, I really like that. But back to the novel... The summary was like she was in this home pla in this home world, but however the home world, you know, the world she was at was taken 
by the Empire, so she had to run again. Which, she can't use her Jedi powers because if she did, well, the Inquisitors will hunt her down. Which, she was fully aware of Order 66 because she nearly got killed herself during Order 66 by Rex and the squad that was given to her by Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin, which... Oh god, the final episode, which, yes, I'm gonna tap into that final episode myself in a future review, which I'm possibly gonna do this weekend when I can, but I'm gonna say the final episode, Victory and Death, really fucking hit home on me. It really fucking hit home. Like, I really felt like that episode... Holy fucking crap, it really hit home. And it, it's kind of depressing, but it hit home. But it hits home very well. The Jedi who knew too much is the episode you're thinking. Yeah, that's possibly right, artistic writer. It could be that, but I'm thinking it's the wrong Jedi. She learned throughout the show as a kid who learned from all her mistakes. That's true, Spanish, Giovanni. And wait a minute. Spanish Giovanni, have you watched the Clone Wars yourself, fam? Has my group of co what real? Has my group of colleagues been r listening to my recommendations of watching the Clone Wars series? I'm a little happy I right mean, now. It's a, good series. it's a good series. So is the Mandalorian. How could we not? Oh, I will talk about the Mandalorian if so if one of my colleagues wants to have a group stream where we talk about certain episodes of Mandalorian. Oh boy, I think I could do this little thing, but I'll I'll discuss that on Twitter. But in the novel, like we also see that she went to this other home world as you know, posing as a mechanic. Which okay, that makes sense because in the show it does show her being a mechanic at times. In times, I'm trying to remember certain episodes where it shows her mechanic skills, but I mean. The downside of this episode, I'm gonna have to explain my downside with the novel, is... Oh god, I'm trying to remember... Oh god damn it. Hang on, sorry class, I'm just gonna have to look at the name of these characters, because I have little issues with these characters. Well, some characters in the Ahsoka novel, which I just feel didn't fit well in the novel, but that's just my nitpick. But let's just discuss... Uh, sorry, here we go. Okay, actually, yes, the world that she went to was called Rada, with, you know, Ra-da. Oh my god. Rada, Rada, Rada. Oh my god, yeah, it sounds like a schnitzel name, Rada, Rada, but it's just Ra-da. Yeah. Like R-A-A-D-A, Rada. But basically, you know, Ahsoka, like this character named Kideen Lardy. Like, I just feel like this character did not fit well in the novel. It's just too... It's just too much in the novel. All I'm seeing in the novel is just this... Ahsoka interacting with these individuals. And the farmers of Rada. Like... Okay. Like, I just feel that the plot of the book was just slowing down. Because of that. But... Whatever. Continuity, I guess. It, it, that's just my nitpick on that. But... In one part of the novel I did like is where Ahsoka was like trying to reach out to Anakin, but the novel describes this scene of how Ahsoka felt while she was trying to reach Anakin. All she felt was darkness. The light that she once felt in the that was in the galaxy was consumed by darkness, and the light that she thought was Anakin, all she felt was darkness and cold. That like that's kind of that's kind of like a how do I explain how do I explain this part? Um, this is a key part of her me. This is a key element of her figuring out that Vader was her former master. Explaining the events of the season two of Star Wars Rebels, which I kind of like that. That's actually a good little Easter egg there, but. Honestly, I kind of like how they the novel explains why Ahsoka cannot show her Force abilities. Because if she does, the Empire will send Inquisitors after her, which... It's understandable. Well, Go ahead. Well, the thing is, 
the thing is though, Ben, is that if the Galactic Empire, like, if somebody was after you, would you actually turn around and say, "Hey, come and look at my lightsaber. It's it's <laughs> brilliant." Oh no! Would you naturally do that? No, I would not. I would try to stay hidden as possible and take over one. <laughs> Wouldn't you, literally, you you wouldn't, you would just literally go, yeah, I'm going to stay my head low for a while because, yeah, I don't want to lose my head, thank you, please and thanks. Yeah, but you, I... You just wouldn't do that. Yeah, and that's what I like she's about this. Very, go ahead. She's been, she's been very crafty with how she does things, and I, I really appreciate Ahsoka's character for that. She's actually, she's actually listening to what people are saying to her, and she's looking around going... Huh. Hmm. Yes. Going to figure this out because yeah, she grew up. Kind of how Rebel points out. Yes, she grew up. She's learned. Yeah, but the one thing I like, the one thing <clears throat> that I kind of understand in the planet Rada, where the Imp Empire finally came in and make the workers like forcing the people to become workers, like you know, working on far you know farm working like. To me, that kind of felt like the Empire's cost is making slavery to the farmers. Like, this is the Empire. The Empire is a fucking... They're fucking pieces of shit. Let's just be real. Every Star Wars fan can confirm that the Empire is kind of fucking douchebags. Especially to their citizens saying, Oh, we will protect you guys for the glory of the Empire. Think of this as insurance. But in truth, they're treating you like crap. Kind of makes hmm. well, isn't isn't that kind of how the isn't that how, how it was planned out to be though that they were genuinely just yeah. horrible people in general? Oh yes, that's true, and it was plotted by Palpatine. Like yeah, Palpatine made this speech in Episode Three, like oh I will make the Republic to a grand empire for a safe, secure society. But in truth, they're all being dictated by a delusional Sith Lord. That will rule them with an iron fist. Like he only kept the Senate in his own way in the in the Darth Vader comments. Hmm? Like, don't you, you know, Ben? I kind of recognize somebody who was exactly like that. His name begins with A, and his second name began with H. Oh yeah, dear. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of under yeah, I kind of grasp yeah that I could grasp too. Uh, hello, Meta eight one eight. Hello and. Space Giovanni is not wrong. Rebels was an A-OK -okay show, in my opinion. Like, I love the lightsaber effects and all that, which I will tap into the, some episodes of the series later on. But, in all honesty, though, I don't know. Like, the show was okay. That's all I have to say. Yes, it explains how the Rebel Alliance came to be and all that, but honestly, I just don't get it. Like, I just don't get the animation for the show, but... Beggars can't be choosers, you know what I mean? Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, beggars can't be choosers in terms of this. Also, um, I just kind of want to point out something, Ben, about um, Star Wars with the continuity and such. Go ahead. The way that um, the way that some episodes, like newer things with Star Wars is coming out, it's kind of creating the line of, the older things, the older episodes are just starting to become non-canon. Just want to point that out. Like the old novels and comics? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's sadly it, true. It's sort of where... The novels, yeah. it, it's sadly true. It, it's sadly true. Like, there's a lot more character developments, especially interesting old characters in the Disney Legends or Expanded Universe that I wish Dizzy would tap into. Like, okay, I know I'm getting off topic on this review, and I will get back to that in a minute. But my concern with Dizzy Cannon is that they're bastardizing the expanded universe. And every Star Wars fan, this could be just me not accepting the Dizzy trilogy's canon, but to me, they're not canon. Sorry. They're not canon in my eyes. To me, I feel like Dizzy is taking a giant piss on the Expanded Universe because, let's be honest, a lot of Star Wars fans like myself can say the Expanded Universe has more story in it than the Dizzy canon. Like, there's a lot story in there. Not just with the prequels, but also with the continuation after the events of Return of the Jedi. 
Like, I really want to see more of that. But that's just me. Maybe I'm a bit of a biased on that. I don't know. To be honest, it's not really a biased thing because, as I see it, um, Disney has liquidated a lot of Star Wars down to the point where it doesn't really have too much continuity as each different show is made or every film is made. It just seems to be they're trying to mesh different things together like they do in The Simpsons. And it, it doesn't work for Star Wars because the lore is just very complex. It really doesn't work that way. Yeah. I can't explain it anything other than that it's just that they're destroying the continuity that has already been set out. Yeah. So... <sighs> Here's the thing that I find interesting in this novel is like, in one part, during the incident of Rada, during an Imperial Sea, you know, when... Ahsoka and her friends and some of the farmers attacked the Imperial, one of the Imperial facilities. And of course, there was an incident that almost happened that Ahsoka stupid, this is on her, she stupidly revealed herself mm. as a Jedi. She used the Force, and one of her friends saw her doing it. Then afterwards, they confronted her, and she had to tell them the truth of her real name, who she was. I'm like... After I read that part, I have the audio book too, which was audioed by the actress who did the who did Ahsoka Tano in the Clone Wars series. When I listened to that section, I immediately face bomb saying, "Ahsoka, you're fucking stupid. You're fucking stupid. You could have just said you should not be poking into things you do not fucking understand. If you know what's good for you, you need to forget me. Do not associate with me. Ghost me out. That's what you should have said. Don't fucking blurt your." full real name don't blurt out that you used to be a jedi like that is asking for a death wish right there that's just my issue too with the novel is her blurting out she's a jedi for everyone to hear like is she stupid actually it's more kind of that she's proud she's like i am a jedi and if you can't accept me like that then you know kind of that kind of thing, Ben. But here's the thing, though. And I, I mean, go ahead. It's if you were a Jedi, would you would be very proud to say, "Hey, I'm a Jedi, and I'm just going to do what I think is right for me as a Jedi." Well, technically, the, she you said, know, and in the Jedi Order and stuff. Yeah, but technically, in the audiobook, she said she used to be a Jedi. That part I didn't understand. But the reason why she blurted that out was because. Her friend, like, her so-called friends acted so fucking stupid. It's like, why did you not fucking trust me? Blah, 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 blah. Like, like, fucking spoiled little brats. I'm like, do you not see what's going on in your backyard? Do you not see stormtroopers at, by your door? Can you not fucking blame her? She doesn't want to get a target on her head or a target on yours. You fucking stupid twat. Like, I I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just an issue that I have with that section too, is that her so-called friends got pissed with her because she, air quote, lied to them and didn't trust them, which, I'm sorry, she had to, like, oh, Jesus, who, who here in the chats have played the game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, who has played that game? Well, I've seen the gameplay videos, and I've seen how Cal Kestis revealed himself as a Jedi to his friend, and he told his friend, you cannot, you need to forget what you've seen. You need to forget it. For your sake and for mine, you need to forget it. Yeah. And on a second class. Yeah. Oof.
I am so sorry for the hold up class. I really am sorry. It's just my roommate needed me to help them out with a few things. But where was I before I had to stop what I was doing? Uh, hello. So sorry about that, Flutter Cinnamon Roll. Sorry that you, uh, you know, hello. Hello. Uh, where was I, Cinnamon Roll? Um, you were asking if ev who's played the games. Oh yes, I did. Yes, I have. And a lot. Okay, let's read real quick here. I did play that game by Mr. Alex. Okay, so yeah. So for those who, like, remember what I said in that scene of where Cal Kestis had to tell his friend before his friend got killed by the second sister. Told him, yo, you need to forget about me. You need to forget what you saw. And his friend recommended him to leave off world and change his name. That's what Ahsoka should have done. It's like, not, you know, kept her head down. And if her friend die, dies, they die. Like, it's gonna suck. And yeah, maybe the Jedi part of you does want to help, but you need to put, like, you need to, she had, like, this is one thing I think Ahsoka, I do, I will give Ahsoka that. Like, she knew the risk, but yet she took it. But at the same time, though, she now has to face the consequences that's gonna go later on in the novel, which I'm gonna tap into, which one segment is the arrival of the sixth brother, which... Oh, dear God. The sixth brother in the novel, like... Summary is, he tracked her down on Rada, found out she went off home world. Then, he decided to try to get her attention by kidnapping the friends, like, torturing them. Which, oh, uh, that... Yeah, that's kind of what the Inquisitors will do. They'll try to lure their prey out is by torturing those closest to you know, their prey, like family, friends, or loved ones. Kind of fucked up, but that's, sure. but their, their tactic worked. It works. The, right? so, so basically, they're like the Star Wars version of the Gestapo, really. Yeah, I think the, I think Lucas Arts is being fascinated, is actually adapting some concepts of real life history. And that's, I think that's why Star Wars is very popular because people understand, oh shit, this is somewhat similar to what actually happened, you know, in history. But, I digress. So, later on in the novel, Ahsoka kind of decided, you know what? No, I need to... I may not be a Jedi anymore, and the Jedi may be dead, but I gotta do something about it. So, what did she decide to do? She decided to make herself new lightsabers. She tried to go to Illum, but she discovered that Illum was completely hoarded by the Empire. She was damn lucky that she got out of there undetected, but when she saw the Imperials in the planet Illum, in her mind, she was like, why is the Empire doing here on this planet that's sacred to the Jedi? Only the Jedi know where this is. How do they know? For, like, I could give you an answer. Read the Darth Vader comics, like, the ones, like, explain, like, after the events of Revenge of the Sith, of what, you know, you know, how Palpatine changed the Jedi Temple into his own palace, which, well, okay, that explains a lot, that's my opinion, that explains a lot, but, you know, hmm? every, every time I look at Palpatine, I just go, he looks like this, like, Palpatine is one of those people who... He struggles to find any kind of balance. He really does. He does. But but he, the thing was, though, like, Ahsoka, later on in the novel, I, I kind of like this, how she fought against the Sixth Brother. And I love this part of the book, too, is where she fucking owned the Sixth Brother. Even though she did not have a lightsaber, she fucking owned his ass. It was fucking hilarious. Like, the part that... Like, Get this, in the novel, it explained it. she actually turned off the Inquisitor's lightsabers off by herself. She felt the kyber crystals within the saber and turned them off and made it explode in front of the Inquisitor, killing the Sixth Brother in the process. Which, damn. Like, I really want to see that in this, either in the, sh in I'm hoping we could see this in the Kenobi series when it comes out. Maybe Kenobi does something similar to this to one of the Inquisitors. 
is making the kyber crystals explode, killing the Inquisitors, but the crystal was intact, though. Even though the saber get, could, you know, the saber will get destroyed, but the kyber crystal will still be intact in one piece. Kind of, it, it, it did it. The Clone Wars did explain that part where Ahsoka was training the younglings of building their lightsabers. The, 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 the Jedi droid was explaining the only thing that's gonna explode is your lightsaber and yourself and the only thing that'll be left is your kyber crystal. So, shit. But, f for those who have not read the Darth Vader comics, you all ever wondered why the Sith lightsabers are red? Have, has anybody ever wondered that? Why are the Sith and Dark Jedi's lightsabers red? Does anybody know? I, 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 is it because of the corruption? Yes. It's called the bleeding. It's called, it's called bleeding. What the Sith and Dark Jedi do is they take a crystal from a Jedi that they killed or their own lightsabers and corrupt it with the dark side of their hatred and their anger towards the crystal and causing it to bleed. Hence, turning from a crystal, let's just say if a crystal is blue, green, yellow, or orange, or purple. You corrupt it with the dark side, it turns red. Like blood. Which makes sense because red can be a color of uh, vengeance most of the time. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that and also rage, too. But... And forgive me if I'm if I if I'm just a bit forward in this, uh, Ben. But didn't she bleed the crystals until they turned like a milky white color? Um, in the novel, it explained what Ahsoka did was she healed the crystals from. She basically reversed the bleeding process to heal the crystals, and through the parts that she collected over her mechanics. Like, yeah, she built her lightsabers. All she needed was the kyber crystals. The novel did explain she was building her lightsabers. But she grabbed the pieces of the kyber crystals that she healed. When she ignited the blade, it was pure white as snow. That's why her lightsabers were uniquely white. They are healed kyber crystals. Purified. And one second, my roommate is calling me again. I'll be back, class. Rada, rada, rada. Sorry, I just had to do that because every time that Ben says rada, it just reminds me of that one character from, um, I forgot what it's called. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> but yeah, Ben's pretty much right about, you know, with, with the crystals. They do, if you do bleed a, well, I call them bleeding, but purifying, if you do purify, it does turn them into a white color it's kind of like reversing the, the goodness the, the badness i'm making the goodness out of it it's, it's sort of what's like that. i'm not very good at explaining star wars lot i am so sorry i'm terrible at it we <laughs>
All right, so sorry for the hold up again. Uh, anyways, but nah, like, as I was saying, like, with the healing, like, I think that's, I think that I would explain, I kind of like how they explained that, like, what the white lightsabers represent in the canon lore. Originally, in the expanded universe, it wasn't fully explained much in Legends, that everybody kept pondering, what does the white mean? People speculated, oh, the white could represent people that are bound under one person. You know, they're like knights. Like, literal knights in shining armor serving under nobilities. Like, the Star Wars Legacy comic arc, you know? But that's just people's mm -hmm. speculations on that. But I like this explanation. It's like, oh, this represents the crystals being purified... Or, in a different sense, someone who is atoned only through the Force. They don't serve neither the Jedi or Sith. But that's just my theory on that. I don't know what people could speculate what the white lightsabers represent in canon. But, to me, it's just representing, representing that the crystals are purified. Like, you purify the crystals into their, in a way, their true self. The purified self. I don't know. But I really love how Ahsoka, how the Ahsoka novel explains how she purified the crystals. But we do get some key flashbacks here and there in the novels, like in the Clone Wars series, like, you know, Anakin reflected on the Battle of Christophus incident. We also reflect on the Order 6, you know, Ahsoka's Siege of Mandalore during Order 66, which I think Dave Filoni kind of added bits and pieces from the novel into the last season. Like her leaving her lightsabers to fake her death, which I, I could quote, I could remember a quote from Ahsoka in her mind about her leaving her lightsabers. She was hesitant and she was like saying, I have to leave this. I have, I have to make it convincing that I'm dead. She didn't want to leave her lightsaber, but she did, which I kind of like that in a way in the final scene of the final episode, which I will tap into that later on. The part that I like is where Ahsoka just drops her lightsaber to the ground, which, of course, Vader will find it sooner or later, but I don't know. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I kind of like that little Easter egg in the final episode. It's like following true to the Ahsoka novel, but I don't know. But after the her battle with the sixth brother, she later on is like she gets herself entangled with a few things like she actually got entangled with the black sun it well agents for the black sun too which that's kind of a oh okay that's pretty funny i don't know maybe that's just me i guess but at the, the ending of the novel is where she talks to Bail Organa, which, oh, there is a dialogue between her and Bail Organa talking about Palpatine. I love how they made Bail Organa sound sour when he said, the Chancellor. Like, you just read that part very closely. The Chancellor played his hand. Like, you could hear it. You, you could read it and you could tell he was sour. Like, very sour by saying, the Chancellor. That's how you can tell. And, of course, it does explain that she got recruited by the Rebel Alliance as Fulcrum. That was her code name, is Fulcrum. But that's the Ahsoka novel, and honestly, I love the novel. It's pretty good. It, ex it just tells us, like, what Ahsoka has been doing... During the early years of the Empire, how did she get her white lightsabers? 
why, you know, what, what happened to her and all that, you know? Because a lot of people were curious, what happened to her during Order 66? Is she dead? Is she alive? What the hell? Give us an answer. And we got the answer in both the novel and in Rebels, which... I hope we see more of her in the Season 3 of Mandalorian, which in the book of Boba Fett we see her interacting with Luke Skywalker, which... I swear to God, we need a fucking series, the Ahsoka series, where she meets Luke. I want to see more, you know, more talk with Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka. Because there was this dialogue in the book of Boba Fett where Ahsoka looks at Luke and says to him, You're just like your father, with a smile on her face. As if she's remembering nostalgia. Like, I'm gonna laugh if she's actually, in a way, uh, you know, like a mentor to Luke. That way, it's her way of, like, paying back to Anakin for teaching her everything she knew. And now she's teaching Luke everything she knew from his father. But what do you think on that, class? Uh, Miss Cinnamon Roll? Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just thought uh, my computer was being shit again, which, ugh, I hate that. But, no, like... It did, it did cut out for just a tiny bit, then. Okay. But, no, like... As I was saying, I really want to see more Ahsoka Tano. Like, I really want to know more, like, what happens to her after Rebels and after the original trilogy events. Like, did she, is she just a, I'm going to put her into the Great Jedi category because she's technically not a Jedi. She's technically not a Jedi or Sith, but in a way, she's a Great Jedi. Steven, I go by Ben. I only changed my channel name to Jedi Griffin Pictures because I just wanted to. But, in all seriousness, though, like, I really love this book. Sure, there are th plots here and there that I didn't like that I felt it slowed the book down. But I really love the novel nonetheless because it's a good book. I highly recommend you guys check this out. If you guys could find this book on the audiobook on Audible, just look up Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston, or you guys could look it up in your local libraries or whatnot, but I highly recommend you guys read this book. Really read this book, because this book has very good detail of Ahsoka. Like, it shows, like, what she's been doing, what was on her mindset, what are the, you know, if you guys could tolerate some plot holes in the novel that kind of slowed the book down but i really recommend you give this a try that's just my opinion but i honestly give this novel a well because of those two incidents that i mentioned earlier in stream with the the characters that i didn't like particularly the sisters that oh just acted like spoiled brats to me that's just my opinion here and the slow plot points but i really give this book a six out of ten it's a good book. That's why I'm giving it the 6 out of 10. It's a good book, and I recommend it for everyone to see it. So, that's my review of the Ahsoka novel class. So, does anybody have any questions or any thoughts of this review in the chats? Then I will try to answer them the best I can. Oh. I don't think anybody has any yet. Yeah, I don't think so either. Does anybody have any? Yeah. Solo Moon says, I thought she died during Order 6. No, she didn't die during Order 66, Solo Moon. She. The Ahsoka novel technically was the. I will say this about one thing I forgot to mention. Technically, the Ahsoka novel, technically, mind you, is technically not canon. Because, like I said, the final season of The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels and bits and pieces episodes of the Ahsoka, of, of The Mandalorian, it kind of negates some bits and parts of the Ahsoka novel. Like, Ahsoka's old lightsabers from being green to blue. 
which in the novels they're still green. But in the final season of the Globe Wars, it, they're both blue. And Rex didn't put his armor on a dead clone and faked his death. He still wears his armor, but I think he kind of removed his helmet in one of the graves somewhere. I don't know. We didn't see it on the final episode, but I think he did fake his death. But that that's just me, mind you, you know? I don't know. Let's just say that maybe he faked his own death. Maybe it's a cliffhanger. Perhaps, yes. Which I really... Honestly, I prefer, Go ahead. I prefer it to be... I would prefer it to be a cliffhanger myself. <laughs> true, true. True, but in a way, this, like I said earlier, the final scene of the Clone Wars of Ahsoka leaving her old lightsaber on the ground in front of the graves of the clones, it's somewhat similar in the novel that she hesitated at first, because I'm picturing, like, hearing Ashley Eggston's dialogue of her leaving her lightsabers in that episode. I was like, Dave Filoni, you clever son of a bitch. You put, you actually fit close to the novel in that final scene. You fit the novel well to a T. You fit it well to a T. But again, I will review the last episode in the future. Maybe I'll do a stream about it, but I don't know. We'll see what the future holds, and also if I'm not too physically and mentally tired from my two jobs. Which again, I apologize for the lack of content, guys. I really am sorry. But I did explain this in my updated video that the two jobs are going to keep me busy. They're going to keep me busy and not to mention I have real life things that need to be taken care of. And those are chores. And I have to focus on focus on that, you know. But I will try though. That's all I will say is I will do my best. <laughs> and it seems nobody's got any questions. So I guess I'll just put this review to an end. Oh, hold up. Which would you prefer, the prequels or the sequels of the Star Wars movies? Um, you need to... My goodness. My goodness. This is, you see, this is a hard thing for me to say for that question. Because to me, the originals are the best. I don't like the fact that they're just adding on and adding on and adding on to things. Thank you. And... Thank you. I d okay. Mr. Alex, to answer your question... I would prefer Return of the Jedi and just end the entire St Skywalker saga, the, the Skywalker saga in Return of the Jedi. Just end it in Return of the Jedi. If you want to continue it like in how they did with Expanded Universe, do it right. Like what they did with the Disney sequels, that is not the right way to execute it. And I'm not the only Star Wars fan that felt that way. You need to execute it right. But honestly, I prefer Return of the Jedi as a true ending of the Star Wars films, in my opinion. I love that movie ever since I was 8 years old, and it will always be my all-time favorite movie. That's just my opinion on the matter. My opinion is, again, that the originals were the best, because they made sense, they continued on. It, it, wasn't, <coughs> hard, it wasn't hard to get sucked in. But the newer ones, I'm just like, wait, that doesn't make any sense to me. No exactly. Sense was made. I'm not a, like I'm gonna just say this now. I my um how can I say this? My watching of uh, Star Wars is very sketchy. But the ones that I have seen, such as the Mandalorian, that is good. That that is that is very good. Like the Mandalorian. That but, is a unique Star Wars. <sighs> It, it, can I say? I will say this about Mandalorian. That is a unique Star Wars film. Yes, you could add a little bit of characters from the original trilogy, but it needs to be executed right. And this is why I really want Dave Filoni to run Lucasfilms low key because he is the true successor of George Lucas. A lot of Star Wars fans, including myself, we all agree Dave Filoni is the true successor of George Lucas. He knows how to make Star Wars right. He he makes it better. He makes the he makes people want to watch the prequels more. 
after the Clone Wars and Rebels. People want to watch the prequels more. Because the Clone Wars series gave a lot of more character growth and a lot of explanations of why Anakin fell to the dark side easily in Revenge of the Sith. That's why people watch 1, 2, and 3 more and more every day. Is because of the Clone Wars series and because it was done by Dave Filoni. Like, that's why I'm saying Dave Filoni should be the new George Lucas of Lucasfilms. And also, yeah, just, just, um, I do actually like Vader, so Ben, just be very careful with anything you say about Darth Vader because he's, he's my husband. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on. I like the Vader arc too. And I even s explain this. I like how they made Darth Vader's arc. They explain Anakin's arc to a T in the Clone Wars series. And I actually, I'm I'm gonna say this. I honestly do not blame Anakin doing what he did in Revenge of the Sith. I honestly don't blame him, because in the Clone Wars, it kind of makes you want to hate the old Jedi Order. I'm like, you bastards, you you bastards. In my mind, it's like you bastards do not know what's coming to you. And it's sad. Oh well. Goodbye. That's how I felt with Master Windu. That's yeah. why he's my least favorite Jedi. I'm glad he fucking died. And I hope he's not alive. If he's alive, I hope Vader fucking kills him. I really hope Vader kills him. Because that would be amazing. Ooh. 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 What? Ooh. 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 No, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't like Mace Windu. He's a fucking douchebag. And no, the fact that what he... I mean, agreed, he is. You know what? You know what he did that bro that 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 broke the straw on the camel's back, or whatever. You know, the other way around. He said this to Ahsoka before the she decided to leave. Hmm? Huh? It's the straw that broke the camel's back. Thank you for clarifying that, Cinema Ball. The straw that broke the camel's back is what Windu said to Ahsoka that made her officially leave the Order. It's like, oh, this is your greatest, tr you know, you being, you know, us turning our backs on you is the test of the Force. This is your greatest trial. Now we see that. I'm like, you motherfucker. Also, also I'm going to say this about the Order as well, is that they seem to not value women as highly as men I, I don't think in my opinion yeah they're a little bit sexist I personally don't think they value yeah they didn't value women whereas you know women Jedi could be really kind of cool <laughs> we need more female Jedi please <laughs> just, okay. just a suggestion Lucas give me more get, we, we need oh, more yes, we need, we more, need more women we need more women yes we need more women Jedi like Ahsoka and I think that's why Star Wars fans really love her it's because she is the best female Jedi ever. Sorry, Ray. You could go fuck yourself, Mary Sue. Yeah, I don't like the sequel trilogy. I really don't. The only exception I like is The Force Awakens, which. Meh. I don't like 7 and 8. Sorry, I don't. No, I don't like 8 and 9. Sorry, I don't like 8 and 9. Sorry. Number 7 was okay. I will say it's an eh, okay. But they lost so many potential after 8 and 9. That's all I have to say on the matter. Nope, you're not wrong, Mr. Alex. The Rise of Skywalker was a fucking bastardization of the Skywalker saga, in my opinion. That's all I'm saying. I'm not reviewing that movie. I'm not watching that movie again. It completely bastardized the Skywalker saga. It's a bastardization. Um, let's be honest. Let's be honest, it wasn't the best. It wasn't. And nope. And I think a lot of Star Wars fans can agree on that. It is a bastardization of Star Wars. I mean, uh, I I'm sorry. Ray Skywalker? No. Keep the name Palpatine. Ray Palpatine. Be the better Palpatine than your grandpa was, Ray. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. I kind of like the name Palpatine. <laughs> also, the name Palpatine just makes me feel so happy. I don't know why. Oh my god. Uh, oh no. <laughs> uh, oh shit. I might have to get ready for work class, unfortunately, for my second job. So, 
Um, luckily, I am free tomorrow and s tomorrow and Monday. I will possibly work on my review during that time, or maybe just do a random stream around one or two p.m. Maybe just hang out with my colleagues on Discord, where you guys could just hang and chill and ask me questions. Or perhaps watch me edit something on Sony Vegas. I don't know. Maybe. But if you guys like this review, please share this around. And be sure to comment, rate, share, subscribe, oh, and all oh. that beautiful shit. And yes, Miss Cinnamon Roll. I just got a question. What do you think of the, the you know, the rides at Disneyland group that are Star Wars? Have you heard the crap Oh, I have they heard. Are? I have heard. And I don't blame the people being pissed off with Disney being... Mm, I can't say more because knowing Dizzy technically is a powerful corporation and technically YouTube is associated with them. That's just my theory. I need to be careful what I say, but sorry, House of Mouse. Get your shit together. That's all I have to say to the House of Mouse. Get your shit together. You guys were A-OK -okay in the 90s, but ever since 2000 came around the corner, you guys went fucking downhill in milliseconds. Get your shit together. But anyways, oh, yeah, by mm -hmm. the way, you're very, very expensive. I'm just going to say, Disney, you're very, very expensive. I can't afford to go to your very fabulous hotels now. <laughs> I would love to go to see the Star Wars hotel, but no, I can't afford that. And I can't Where afford to go? the lightsaber. Thanks. Yeah, and I can't even fucking afford the replica lightsabers. Like, what the fuck? I want to own a Garflex lightsaber, for God's sake. I could get one that's better looking and accurate to the movie in Saberforge, which is by far the best websites to get good Neo Pixel lightsabers. Sorry, Disney. Bye bye. But no, that's oh, all. Hmm? And, have, and have you seen how much it costs to buy a droid? Yo, it's a lot. A freaking lot. I'm like nearly twelve thousand. Like nearly twelve, twelve hundred bucks. Are you fucking nuts? Hell nah. I could make one out of a trash can for less. Dude, I've seen a lot of people do a D eight D D Y I droids out of parts you could get from the Home De Home Depot or Lowe's. It's not that hard. But anyways, you know, maybe, maybe that should be something Ben that you can do. I'm not very. I'm not very good at making things. I'm just being dead honest right now. I'm not good at making shit. <laughs> okay. That's that's fine. <laughs> Anyways. Alright, guys. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have because I really sincerely have to work. So, again, I will I'm be available gonna... during the weekend. Sunday, Monday. I'm going to try to work on my possible review. If not, I'm going to do a normal stream either Sunday, tomorrow in 1, 1 p.m. PST or 2 p.m. PST or Monday 2 p.m. PST. And be sure to comment, rate, share, subscribe this beautiful channel as well as my second channel. My Twitter feed is rebel, at Rebel13. Be sure to follow my Twitter. And if you guys like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Any little bit helps to keep this channel, go, both my channels going. And thank you all for coming. I'm just going to add something on here. What are you going to do? I'm just going to add something. Should hey, I be Yes. Should I kiss your beak for good luck? Okay. Mm -hmm. Kisses his beak for good luck. <laughs> That's a good beak.